first thing I sold, I pick up the check and it was, it was, I think $35,000. It said on a check. Oh so look at me, look at me. This is me. What if I never sell again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. What's going on, guys? We got another episode of Chats with Max. We got the amazing Yelena Yorkin. Hello. She is a international artist. She specializes in pointillism. We'll throw up some of her art here. Some amazing works of arts that have taken up to and beyond 10,000 hours. Yes. 500 million dots, for example, with this Eden's Apple piece. Amazing stuff. Thank you. Um, your art just stood out to me, especially because of how much time I know it takes to do it. So I can't wait to dive into your backstory and your inspirations growing up and what kind of drove you to pursue this career in art. Uh, Kim, what kind of stood out to you about Yelena? Her art is very um, stunning. When I first saw it, I told Max, I was like, this is beautiful. I love it. I absolutely love it. And yeah, I mean, you have good questions on here. So, so Yelena, I mean, let's pull it back a bit. Okay. So, you know, you have an amazing level of success now. I've even seen a recent video that someone was saying that you've created uh, a million dollar company with what you're doing. And I really wanted to pull back the layers of everything and start from the beginning. So you're originally, are you from Russia or, or where did you grow born, up? I was born in Armenia. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's equally half half and I speak both languages Russian and Armenian so English is my third language but uh, I, I'm basically local LA because I've been living here since I was 10 even though if I go back and forth but I mean I went to elementary school here middle school here so LA is my home mm -hmm. not motherland but LA is my home yeah right? which I love it amazing so, besides four or five traffic. I mean what was like <laughs> what it was like like life like for you growing up I mean like what were your influences what was uh inspiring you from a young age to pursue this career in art okay <laughs> <laughs> do we have to go that back of course yeah <laughs> uh, so just, honestly I, I mean if we talk to, if we talk the truth art was like not even in my head there was no art in my brain like that that did not exist and the way I grew up it's very different than what L, what LA kids how how LA kids grew up you know because I had it equally back and forth back and forth mm -hmm. and how where I'm from I mean I was raised on like I don't know if you guys know like bands like you know Rammstein German bands and then Prodigy and then Led yeah. Zeppelin and then you come to LA and all the kids are like I don't know you know I don't Disney know Channel hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to kind of like e equal that out to blend into which was hard but mm -hmm. I was doing a good job at it so art was like never there I knew I was talented but that's where it ended Basically, that was like the period line. So I knew I was talented. I knew I can do that. And I was actually like into piano. I was going to piano school for like eight years and everything. So art was like the least thing on my mind. At what age do you think you started picking up or taking a liking? Everything to happened art? recently, all like five years. Damn. Wow. Yeah. And it so just what like sparked that it, interest, I, especially with pointillism, because I mean, yeah, pointillism is like three years. Yeah, yeah, because okay. if you check like the big guns I did that like Mushhead and everything, they were all like uh, Copic markers, which they sponsored me. They found me and sponsored me, and that yes. was amazing. Yeah, but all of those things were like acrylic brush, more like what you do. You know, it was very like colors mm -hmm. and paint and gold. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I think just automatically, I talked about this re uh, recent interview that I always have like Johnny Walker whiskeys. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, say it again? Johnny Walker whiskeys. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, okay, yeah, Like yeah. Blue Label, Black course, Label, yeah. all of those. So I, I don't know what I've seen. I, I know I've said it somewhere, so I must have go back to read about it. But I was just like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, point, 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 draw the bottle. Mm -hmm. And I actually did it and it was just for fun. Mm -hmm. And then I did the black and white Chanel. It was again, just for fun. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't like doing commercialized stuff. I don't like, you know, copying photographs and stuff. Yeah. So that was just like for fun because it, just to know if I can do it. And mm -hmm. I sold those two pieces in England nice. and I was like, Oh, was that kind of a so light that was moment the for you where you're saying, wow. Oh, like I could actually make this into something. I you know? knew that it's going to just, kill me because it's just so time consuming like you're saying that's like the, that's the yeah thing that... it was extremely time consuming do you find it therapeutic 
I feel like you Yeah, sh- I mean, I just yeah. jump into a parallel universe. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I have my own thing happening. I know, like, it's going to, like, if I start something and I know, I like, nobody needs me for eight hours or whatever, that eight hours is, like, my other life. Like eight hours <laughs> Like, at a time? Can you yeah, I would hours? be sitting eight hours yeah. and then I get downloads, literally downloads from the universe. I'll jump to, like, another timing yeah. And then I'll do my thing. And then mm-hmm. when I come back, like that area is already finished. Yeah. So I don't think, I don't process when I'm drawing it. You just kind of go yeah. for it. You get in the zone. That's awesome. That's why I'm, I'm like mentioning it. Like, uh, I think the only stuff was uh, the bottle, um, the Chanel piece and car. Those were like photographs, but I don't count those because they were just like commercial commercial projects. Yeah. So all like the new stuff, tarot cards I'm doing and all of that. It's somehow I know what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So I don't think about it. Mm -hmm. And then after like months, basically not hours, you know, after like five months, it's completed. Not sure how, but it's completed. You're like, but it's done. (laughs) You're like a blacked out. I don't know how. Some portion of it, but we good. Yeah, that's That's what That's beautiful. I love that. Do you, sorry, I know we're going to like. No, it's okay, I'm fine. But do you, because I know certain artists for me, like I love wine. When I, and for certain parts of the process, like that are a little more uh, attentive, I want to say like resonance chemical. I don't drink wine. I've done it before and it just doesn't work out well. But sometimes I feel like that helps me get in the flow. I know some people like will drink or smoke. Do you just go in totally sober? I don't do anything. So you just go. Oh, and, and then you just get and do you play music and just get sometimes, in your zone? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll have like, just like, I don't know, Chad Faker or someone, just like a smoother music next to me. Mm-hmm. I don't pay attention. And then sometimes I'll just find like a TV show that you don't have to watch. Mm-hmm. You know, Netflix has, Netflix been has a yeah, bunch shows. of shows that you don't have to watch. It just like goes on. Yeah. So... As if I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's no, the I've done that yeah. before too. I'll have something in the background. It's just like, because it's nice you know, to it's have. just the sound. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do anything. It's strange because if I even have like tiny bit of a drink, just mm-hmm. like a regular drink, I will not work. Yeah. Because mm. you want to relax, right? Yeah. Like my brain will not come back to like the function. I'm not mm. functioning. It's just like, it's con- it constantly know what it's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And then if I get it like a, E stage, yeah, like it won't process, yeah. So but I get like what you're saying because I, I, everyone I know, like even musicians and composers, they go like, you know, I get in my moment, yeah. and oh, then yeah. I start. I don't have that moment, yeah. So it, I just do it. You just like go for it. Yeah, that's the how, that's how the brain is already processing it. Yeah, yeah. It's strange, but no, it's perfect. Yeah. I love that. So tell me a little bit about before all of this though so what were you doing you said you picked up pointillism within the last three to five years yeah. so what was life like before that what were you pursuing i i mean i was into artistic stuff but not drawing and painting i Just was like piano yeah I'm, after that like i had i i had so many jobs i was like f- f- doing photo shoots i was I was the photographer and then I had so many like graphic design things to do, editing, like video stuff. And then after that, I jumped to industrial interior design. So that was kind of like jumping to art, but Mm -hmm. I was not painting. So we would have like 500 of these and they would be sold to like hotels or like showrooms. But that was like business, business. Yeah. Yeah. That was business, business, but it had to do with art. And then after that, I I literally started uh, drawing the 3D striped gun. Have you seen it with so many colors? It's like mm-hmm. 3D. Yeah. And it was like half done. That's how the career started. I was at an event and this man came with his wife. They're like, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I'm just drawing. It's like half done. And they said, we own a gallery. Just call us when you finish. And I, wow. wow. That's how it started. And I was so late, like always. I was like, I think 10 minutes before the closing was that of the Moosh event. Or what no, was no, that? this was like... Oh. Uh, five years ago yeah and um that was like the only thing i had like as in a piece to go to show yeah and then i called them after like three months whatever i finished they came picked up the piece and it was sold after a week so they were like just go home and just do art don't do anything else yeah that was it so that was kind of your how you got started into art. yeah because that's I was wonderful like, i was like oh okay yeah i made money with it and yeah. people loved it you're like i'll do it yeah <laughs> i'm making it a step yeah that's good. so there were like no steps i didn't get yeah it, there were like no steps on processing mm-hmm. not like i mean i think it's good when you go kind of step by step not so good but it's yeah. kind of good it gives you like a processing stage yeah. i didn't have that i didn't have time to think yeah. Mm-hmm. So it just happened. You were just, just doing it. Yeah, it just happened. Kind of just caught. 
And the same thing with Moosh. Uh, I went to her gallery uh, to support a friend. Mm -hmm. And of course, I didn't know who the owner was. And, you know, the owner was talking to me. And right away, she was like, uh, are you the girl who, who paints the huge guns? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, can I see all of them? And I showed her. And then after a month, I had a show. That's wow. beautiful. Private show. Yes. So that was Damn. Like, so there was like no time to even process yeah. or to think. Wow. Or, You're like yeah. getting ahead on our questions. I know you are, but that's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Um, you can add questions. Oh, yeah. We got no, of you, course. We got you, girl. Yeah. <laughs> All the ones you wanted to add while we were talking. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. So, so you're saying you didn't study anything art related either, right? So no. did you go, do any kind of no. schooling after high school or anything? I never had art education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Never. What, what was your background? Did you go to college at all? Yeah. Or? My background is graphic design and photography. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, when you go to school for that, you kind of learn how to draw, yeah. but I already knew how to draw. So yeah. I was not like I think it's fixated one of on it you know School it was just like a class so yeah. yeah it's more something that you just like is inside of yeah, you it had I think you're kind of this just born to and then do, I went to transportation it? design uh Pasadena mm -hmm. yeah but so nothing was fine art related basically mm -hmm. nothing was like you know that, yeah. that this is who you are this is like you know mm -hmm. your real artist yeah. what do you look for inspiration current there when you're creating and everything like well, what do you pull inspiration from it's just me really yeah that's not a lie like so you just go <laughs> if you get Next if level. you get to know me you <laughs> you see what i mean so you just like, go into your zone and then you just go for yeah, it yeah it, it, everything has to it is related to me mm -hmm. so like if i do daggers because i have daggers i collect da daggers you know i collect knives and <laughs> casual I, casually i have like, a job like with a me 11 <laughs> yeah. like don't mess with me <laughs> yeah and the same thing is with guns you know yeah. like i i think it's just so funny when people like think it's just cool oh i did like a masculine thing and then it's just like a girly girl like you know you're like Ari ariana grande and they're like oh i just love guns you're like <laughs> you're like do you do you, do you really <laughs> do you really yeah. you got like a bazooka in your yeah, closet so, you're like get on my level <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I love, I love the girly, girly <laughs> things too. But I don't, I don't walk around and go like, oh my god, I love this pink skirt. That's just not me. Yeah. So I don't get why, when people do that. But with my stuff, like I have guns and I go shooting. So it was kind of my wow. thing. Yeah. So you know, you know what I mean now, because now you saw how like yeah the storyline of the paintings, how it kept changing. Uh -huh. So it kind of had everything to do with me. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And now I'm designing twenty-two tarot cards nice that's like that's from zero hit. i can see that yeah. happening oh, yeah. for sure. they're from like everything is like they don't exist so everything is made up everything is from zero that's so true. i will like educate educate myself about four months on a single card mm -hmm. and then after that i'll just come up with like a whole vision how it's gonna be that's mm -hmm. beautiful so you'll but you take the time to be able to do that so you said like four months you'll take the time to yeah learn about if i'm already if i'm already working let's say i just finished the magician card already it's set and the ending process like one month will be automatic you know mm -hmm. you're just adding more colors or you're just making it darker so the whole thing is finished Le then i would start like my brain will start doing research on the new piece mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so tell me about your one of your previous pieces that eden's apple one because that just amazes me the stats that, behind that's it that's like a very yeah that's a huge story Ten thousand hours yeah. you said roughly i'm sure like that's hard to calculate for were you keeping track or not really like, we kind of did yeah. so we recorded actually like a tiny layer mm -hmm. like how long the first layer goes how long the second layer goes and mm -hmm. that's how the dots are approximately calculated yeah mm -hmm. like someone i think someone wrote in their blog like goes like i calculated like it should have been 13 hours instead of 10 or whatever i'm like dude <laughs> but yeah whatever <laughs> like seriously tell me about my shit or like. no no or he was like i i think you worked more months i'm like i think i worked like 20 months but i'm just gonna say 10 months or whatever to get yeah. over with like yeah. nobody actually sits and like gets that specific like how you like clocks in clocks yeah. out type thing i'm like whatever makes you happy just write down whatever you feel exactly just <laughs> comfortable <go for> with <laughs> and, yeah and talking about the months i saw like the stat you put was 13 months and then 500 million dots yeah which wow but it how was how big is the piece like it's huge well, it's huge, it's it's huge. Yeah. It's like it's like there to there so like i mean i have a picture next to a guy who's six three mm -hmm. so it's i think it's about it's bigger than he is sitting Mm -hmm. on the floor six three nice so it's a pretty big piece that's a good like size. a life size like a life yeah yeah she's life size basically. so tell me about it though like it has how a, did you just dive into that project were you doing multiple projects at the same no, time no i can never do that 
So mm -hmm. I just work on a one Interesting. Yeah, I, can't I think I'm opposite. I can't. Because yeah. if I do the same thing, I will hyperanalyze and then I'll start hating it. And for me, I just need to step away. I can't because those dots just like so psychopathic. That's so true. you just kind of stay on the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Keep zoning and keep going. Yeah. Damn. But the, the story of her is like super strong because people just look at it and they go like, oh my God, it's a pretty girl, like naked. And that's it. But the story of it is like the Edith's apple is the golden apple. So whoever has the golden apple, that's the person who gets like basically what they want and success. Hmm. And golden apple, like usually through history. Um, hmm. If have if you've seen like the movie Crit, that's how you say it, right? Crit mm -hmm. with yeah. Michael, the German actor. With your Ma accent, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so if you see that movie, it's like, you know, it's a fantasy movie, but basically it explains and that's the story of it. So through gen, like, you know, through history, like Napoleon and all these big people fought over that golden apple who has it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you have it, you just use it for, you know, bad stuff instead yeah. of good stuff. That's yeah. why she has the mask on her face, but she's the one who has it. Basically, mm. I had it that time. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. So talk to me about the process, though. So, I mean, you spent about 13 months on it. I mean, what did oh, that... Oh, it was longer than a relationship. I know. What did, <laughs> what did the day-to-day -day, day -day -day look like for you with that? It was horrible. But for me, it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. You know, because that's who I am. Yeah. But I think for everyone else, they were like... <laughs> They're like, yeah. are you okay? They were like, because you're spending geez. so long on the same thing. That's why it's so amazing. Like, how to many me. hours I would a day? Yeah, I would not be able to do that now because of my life and everything that's happening. But that time, I think I knew that okay, this is the only time I can allow myself to work nonstop. Mm -hmm. So there was no timing. Like, I would totally work like 18 hours mm -hmm. and then watch like a two-hour movie, have coffee, whatever I would, and then continue again. So there was not, there was no morning or night. Mm -hmm. Whenever I would sleep, I would sleep. It can be 4 p.m. I was not sleeping in my bed. I was sleeping on my bed. So I would not be comfortable to sleep long. Wow. Oh, yeah. And that was I would get mad. For if the whole I was, period of yeah. time? So if I was sleeping Did more you than, have a time constraint for this or no? You just no, like, knew you I, I kind of knew it's going to take more than a year. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I cannot sleep more than six hours. So if I, you know, if you even try, if you have a blanket and sleep on your bed, yeah. you'll be so awake and energetic after four hours. But if you're inside of your bed, you sleep seven hours and you're like, oh, I can't wake up, you know? Yeah. So I kind of <laughs> I knew mean, that. I don't, this is the first time I've heard yeah. of this strategy. I kind of like knew it. that. So I was always sleeping on my bed. Oh yeah. my God. It works for her. It works for her. Oh. Man, yeah new sleep science i'm old now crazy. i don't think it's gonna work now <laughs> now <laughs> i don't I, know about that i think nine hours and i still want to sleep <laughs> i mean that's me too yeah, yeah. i'm like always sleeping. and somebody told me they were like i think i was 27 when i did that 28 or 27 something like that and they said mm -hmm. do that now because after 30 you can't so i was like oh, oh i've oh. heard that yeah like I was like, sleep like it just sleep deprivation 30, hits you, you differently right yeah you can still be that. the same but somehow after 30 if you sleep four hours that's just not gonna work i thought it was better because we're maybe my dad's an exception but he at one point uh would just sleep like four hours a night and that would be like it for him and then automatically so wake he up. he would probably get then very good rest in the four hours i'd hope so yeah. i don't even know hopefully yeah <laughs> i'll oh my to check in on that so okay you're closing out this piece what was the next plan? I mean, did you have a plan for a show? And, and honestly, I'm sure other people were thinking about this too that are listening. How did you, did you have enough like financial runway for you to just pursue this project solely at the time? Or were you like, what was going Somehow on? Somehow I always, it's so strange. Somehow I always have enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that happens. I feel like that sometimes too, yeah. where you're it just like, it just you happens. Get something and it happens. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's weird. Were like, you with the gallery at the time that, like, what's the yes, timeline here? Yes, so you're with yes. your first gallery. Well, the prints are selling very high price. Mm -hmm. So I was already doing good. Mm -hmm. So you were doing selling yeah. so limited So I was sitting prints. on a comfortable place. Which, no. side note, with the prints, I saw you hand embellish them as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. So everything that's hand embellished, that would go more, mm -hmm. you know. And there's some people who just like so specific on the numbers they want. Yeah, Interesting. like mostly all Chinese uh, girls and the recent interview I did, she has a piece. They all want number eight because it brings money. Ah, Really? So there's specific numbers like I would keep. So like good luck numbers. Yeah, not sell out. So I know that someone's going to buy like number fours, people buy number threes. 
13. Of the collection? Yeah. So, yeah. so number threes, number fours, what are they lucky or? Three, four, eight, and 13. So yeah, they're the, uh, somehow. Somehow they're lucky. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. So keep in mind. Yeah, yeah three, four, eight, and 13. Yeah. Got it. Not like keep it in your house, just like a safe bank, but <laughs> like if you're gonna have something. Hold to, on to them. Yeah, to like give a gift or give away. Like don't give those numbers. Yeah. So, yeah. Or maybe for everyone it's different. Yeah. Like I have a friend who always sells number sevens. Hmm. For me, that never happened. So yeah, that's another thing. No, they don't take advice because I guess everybody has like because I, I don't want to say that and you're like, oh my god, that it's the me. wrong thing. Yeah, it's different. For number everybody. sevens never happened for me mm-hmm. somehow. So you never know. I guess somebody, everybody has their own energy, mm-hmm. and then maybe buyers click on that energy. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but yeah, I paid attention to that. And number seven, nobody cared about my number seven. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. And for that guy, he's like, all my number sevens are gone. I was like. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, everyone has their different thing that works yeah. for them. Maybe well, it's number the seven is a good number. Them. It is? Okay, lucky number. Like my lucky number. No, it's like lucky know. number 11. So it's seven and 11. Oh, damn. I'm learning so much about yeah. lucky numbers. I'm like taking notes. <laughs> That's awesome. So walk us through the timeline of, so you got your first gallery. Um, they basically just walked up to you and said, we love your stuff. Yeah. We'd like you to contact us again. So you get in that gallery um what was it like after that because I love learning the different especially because we've been doing interviews with fine artists and just learning I think their process of growing in the art world Mm -hmm. you started off with this gallery um what was it like after that did you work with them for a little were you exclusive I was just home doing all the other stuff awesome because I knew it's gonna take too long yeah yeah kind of like okay I have out from the world yeah so I was just like away alone yeah and then I did like three four pieces and right when I was finishing those, I met Mush. Hmm. So I oh, really? So there was yeah. just like, you it went from that one small gap, yeah. to the other one. That's wonderful. And then I also wanted to ask, do you know um, Brian BDB? Yeah, that, that's okay. him. That's his studio. No way. He just moved to Miami or like just moved out. So I love go him. To Miami. He's, the he's best. such a sweetheart. I'm so mad he's yeah. gone because he would always blast music and we would be like sipping on wine. He's just to so music, chill. Just vibing yeah. out. Oh yeah, definitely. He's the chill. best. He's the best. That's awesome. But I was super excited because I've been to Moosh Gallery before for his shows yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. And we went to like hang he's out guy, and just yeah. check out the area. He's amazing. Right? And so um, when he told me that we were interviewing you, he's like, she's with Moosh just said oh, that's Brian's gallery yeah. like that's really exciting. I went there to support him and uh Flory at his yes Flory. their art and their class I haven't seen Flory for so the, such a long time I think he's in Miami yeah everybody's in Miami yeah I think yeah <laughs> everybody's my, I don't know I like LA. I w- yeah I want to kind of think about I like LA like, yeah. I mean <laughs> I, I really do like LA I definitely want to visit um it's cool to go there yeah just to go there cool yeah but I don't know if I would want to be there I for would hurricane not live season, there though. no 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 and the jellyfish season in august if, oh, like no one's that. swimming and then everybody gets like you know all and everybody's peeing on everybody so oh, they don't get scars Ew. <laughs> what just it was yeah it i stings, never go right there. yeah i never stings. go there in august oh my gosh well because when we went when horrible. did we go it was like we went just going into hurricane season i think I think well, Art crazy. Basel always starts after, so that's probably... Not. Art Basel is a beautiful time. No, I didn't go December. for Art Basel. We Which, went... by the way, she spoke on a panel at Art Basel. Yeah, it was nice. It was so ah, nice. I the crowd. That. I love how the crowd was older people. Yeah. It was not like youngsters. I loved it. Really? That's beautiful. So, that's I mean, nice. that's a very simple answer to the question, too. It's like, what was the timeline? So you worked with that gallery, yeah, it, I guess, it for a couple like years. And then everything you happened. got with Moosh, like a timeline, maybe like a year later or a couple of months later. Year, I think year. a year later. Which that's passed awesome. very fast. Yeah. I was not doing anything. I was just painting. You were yeah. just busy doing those I was dots. Just painting. I feel like yeah. you get stuck in like this time vacuum and then just like yeah. all of a sudden you're there. That's awesome. It's scary, though. Like, I mean, it's, September, it's part of the beauty of it, though. May. I mean, yeah. <laughs> how fast time goes by? Like, um, it is normal, though. It was not like this 15 years ago because of the globe and everything is changing the way it moves. Mm-hmm. So it's not like people think it's going fast. It's actually everything is mo- moving fast. So but and then for me to tap into something and then come out and it's May, that's kind of sad. 
I mean, You're like, what beautiful. happened to all the other months? I Wait, talk about the globe though. thing more. I've never heard that. No, that's too long of a conversation. <laughs> she, goes, she goes, that's a rabbit trail for another day, another time. That's that's a warehouse. She just like, casually like, drops Usually the one that like keeps keeps on schedule. We should have coffee in the warehouse. You know? know. Yeah. <laughs> that would be afternoon time. Yes. I was not ready for that globe comment. I'm like, huh. Yeah, I'll have to research that later. <laughs> She's yeah. like Googling right now. <gasps> That's wonderful. And then that kind of piggybacks on the other question. So what, because you have like a hundred and like 50,000 followers somewhere around there. Yeah, they, they keep dropping because I suck at posting. Oh, it's whatever. Instagram, I whatever. post like every month, like once a month. That's so sad. It's, just, it's like showbiz. You that. keep them wanting more. Oh, right. you, you post, he posts like once a year. This last yeah. year like, was pretty bad for that. It was pretty rough. But um, what did you, like what came first? Do you think the followers came first or are you working with the galleries came galleries. first? Galleries. So you work I mean, with I the didn't galleries? I didn't know like Instagram stuff. Really? So you, that's so interesting because we hear so many different answers. So you worked with the gallery first and then the followers just started. Yeah, I don't think that happened. world cares about Instagram. Oh, they don't. don't. That's why I'm, none um, of my collectors even have Instagram. I mean, I'm talking about older people. Yeah. And people like probably who buy from Moosh, they don't care about the Instagram. Yeah. Which seconds that whole point that yeah. follower count doesn't necessarily yeah. translate to dollars. No, follower it's count just does like, not equate to success It's just like all. normal people who like you, you know, who follow you, who like who you are and all those things besides your friends. Mm-hmm. But I think like the museum world people, I don't think, yeah, it's all about the quality and work. Mm-hmm. I think so too. It might, ha- it it will help them if they want to like promote something. You know, it, of course, it's gonna help them. But I don't think the collectors care. Yeah, especially the I yeah. think the age demographic too. Sometimes yeah. like the more established collectors are a little older. Yeah, mostly not always, but I feel they probably wouldn't yeah. be that I much had on a, Instagram. I had a girl bought two pieces and she doesn't even have an Instagram. Yeah, so she doesn't even see an interview I do or whatever I yeah. post. <laughs> like, how do you know all the stuff I did? Like, yeah, <laughs> she doesn't know. Wow. wow. So, and then they just kind of came organically. There was no growth strategy or anything like that nothing, for Instagram. Nothing. Wow. It's interesting because with some of the artists that we've talked to, like they have a whole plan with it. Like Felix, for example. Well, Felix is a different type of artist um, where he does most of his stuff digitally. And so he's like, he doesn't prefer to work with galleries. That's just how he works. But what's interesting is that, because I see other artists that work with galleries, even similar or even the same gallery. I work alone and a don't, lot though. You work alone a lot? A lot. Mm-hmm. My like la- directly. Yeah, my last private solo show was just me. Yeah. What do you think pulls more sales, working with the gallery or having your own sales via social media? It depends. Media? I think it just depends on the work. Hmm. Yeah. So, I don't think any, like for prints any, versus originals or? No, like once you're kind of in it mm-hmm. and your work is good, mm-hmm. I think with a gallery without it i mean if you have like a very good gallery who does lots of press who has lots of pr of course that's going to be helpful Mm -hmm. like with my galleries they don't do press and pr like mush doesn't Mm -hmm. do all those things so it's like organic collectors yeah like it's like loyal collectors who know you did something new and then come by original or print but i think once you kind of establish a kind of a circle that knows you if you're alone, if you do sh- just a party, you know, in a warehouse or you have a gallery show, those people, again, don't care. Mm. They just want to see the work. Oh, so they don't yeah. they don't like the events or things like so. Yeah, shows. money. Yeah. I mean, you're probably going to make s- the same exact money mm-hmm. if you just throw a party with your artwork or you have like a specific gallery like on Fairfax or somewhere. Mm-hmm. I, it's going to be the same thing. And you can't casually mention throwing your own solo show. What's the story behind that? Did you rent out a spot and just plan out the whole thing? No, I I wanted to have something only for my friends Mm -hmm. and only for the people who live in Lele Mm -hmm. and have my stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So collect. And it was like, uh, well, no gallery would throw, no gallery ever like throws a solo show like that. I mean, I had black caviar, red caviar, you know. (laughs) (laughs) It was like going to a wedding. I like that. (laughs) I mean, everybody was fan. eating. <laughs> everybody was like happily eating. That's oh, what's up. I like yeah, that. I had like she did something similar to that too. Yeah, and I love going to places like that. Like, if you invite me to like a you know a private solo show, I don't care if it's a gallery. I don't. I think it's just. I think people who specify it, where they go like, oh my god, I know an artist who's with this gallery. I think that artist already doesn't have a name. 
Mm-hmm. So you kind of like labelize it with the gallery. So you like, oh. it's Makes like sense. who's bigger, the artist or the gallery yeah. type thing? Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. just like, I did a show, a lone show and I only invited 40 people and 75 people, 80 people showed up. Mm-hmm. So my expectations were just like you, me and my friends. And it was just like coming to my house. You're doing it more to, to have, have a food. good time with the people. Yeah. That, uh, and you know, I felt that people were actually very like, dress super nice but they the energy was so like nice Mm -hmm. because they only came to see me yeah it was not like a gallery opening show they came Mm -hmm. to see me and that was like really sweet like i would come and support you i'm there because of you Mm -hmm. the energy was so different than a gallery show i like that a lot and especially because you know that they're there to see you and they really love your art you know and they're like really supporting you yeah like it was not that thing like oh this is a famous gallery let me go there who am i gonna meet or let me just post a picture on instagram people who are already invested in it yeah it was just like i like that it was so sweet like i had i had actually four people flying from new york that was very sweet that's got it. Like, yeah. isn't that a good and feeling when you're them, like, oh. yeah, two of them were like my favorites. So I was just like, oh God, this is so sweet. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's like, that's, it that's was, a I, highlight. As an artist, I think that's one of the yeah. best things when you know that someone just actually got on a plane. Yeah, I didn't care about their like ass over selling. I didn't care no, about No, it's the people that came like, and they just wanted to see yeah. you and to see your art. I think that's one of the best things. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, that's beautiful. I like want to, I'm like, want to see your art like in person. You will. Now. Yes, I will. I will. <laughs> you will. come to you your studio. <laughs> you will. You no, know, I have to ask a lot of artists, some of them have assistants to help them with their pieces and vice versa. Is Yelena York just you? It's or? just me. Wow. It's just you. Do you, you don't have a manager or okay. anything like that? Major. Just you? No. Get it, girl. Don't split that. Take it out. <laughs> she doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very, I'm very on our side of the world when it comes to like hooking up. Like if somebody hooks me up with someone, I'll take care of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't like that American style. Like literally somebody just brought you $500 million and they go like, thank you, dude. You're like, you could have just bought a gift or something. Mm-hmm. So I have that our side of the world where like, I'll take care of you. Yeah. Like, you know, if somebody introduced me to someone and I'm going to make money out of it. And even that person goes like, no, you don't have to give me a cut. Like I'll do something mm-hmm. good for you. I think that's I'll a give lot a percentage or if you don't take, it's going to be a gift. It's going to be something. Yeah. So everybody comes out winning. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and that's what I like. I see that happen a lot in the art world or too even with just in dealing with other people or even with galleries a lot of times it's like, oh, I just want to help you, you help me. And what, especially because I have a business background and so, because we, I've worked with one gallery and I was surprised at how there were no contracts. It was all just I like have no contract. handshake. Yeah, there are with, no contracts. With no one. Which for me, uh, having a business background is like you have a contract with anybody. Exactly. Like I even have one with my housemates just to make sure everyone's taken care of. And just to, oh yeah oh, <laughs> if someone's gonna leave they well, gotta you let us know like, you, you don't need a contract they pay you you give the art they don't pay you you don't give the art exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly but you even know. Well, in, like she's probably mentioning like you're probably or, like referencing like exclusivity deals and stuff like that exclusivity with galleries, right? percentages like yeah. things like that it was more of just like i'm gonna help you out you're gonna help me out handshake yeah. type thing and i think no, a lot what? of that was in the world that i like you know yeah Whoever I work with, even if I do Miami or anything, well, like the panel talk was like, you know, it was a bank. Mm -hmm. Uh, So when something gets that legal and it's, you know, it's like, it's a bank. Those things, yeah, you just sign a contract there. You are going to go. So they're not going to pay you. Yeah, so they're not like wasting. Yeah, 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 so they go like, we're paying you. So you're signing a contract there. Of course, I'm going to be there. But when it comes to gallery, somebody calls me and they go like, oh my God, I sold this piece for this amount of money. Will you bring it to the gallery? There's no contract. Mm-hmm. You take it, you pick up your check and you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's good. And then do you do, because I'm wondering kind of the scale, because for me, so I have few pieces mm-hmm. and they take, I don't want to say necessarily that, I don't know, that one's taking a long time. I, and that one's, a few of them, sometimes they take a long time. Um, do you have a lot of pieces out? Cause some of the other artists that we've been with, they'll just have a bunch of art pieces. Do you think you have a lot of art pieces or because your oh, art no, pieces it takes take me a so long, long time? Long. Yeah. You just have very few art pieces. I didn't do any, I didn't, well, I did Miami and stuff like that, uh, every year, but I didn't have, so I had my private show with motion and I had this private show in October mm-hmm. so that, what is that? Two and a half years or something. I didn't have any show because mm-hmm. I didn't have pieces. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of, uh, 
because it takes me so long. Mm -hmm. So I have to pause. So mm -hmm. every show will be like in a couple of years and then a show, a couple of it's years part of the process, and then a show. So. so now like a lot of things I don't sell. Mm -hmm. So the limited edition prints will be available or whatever editions will be available. But and then the piece is for sale, but it's not for sale. Mm -hmm. So I'll keep to have more pieces. Mm -hmm. If I didn't if I didn't do that, I would not have a show in October. Mm -hmm. I would have like no pieces. That's I've done that before. Even if someone offers to buy the piece, I'll say, hey, actually, I wanted this for a show. Yeah. Have you ever done that before? Or you just say, you know, if you have it, you have it. Because for well, me, I'll say, I always can I give borrow it, it for the yeah, show? Yeah, I always give it. And then usually people don't want to give you back because mm -hmm. it's already hanging in the house. Yeah, they're like, well, yeah, And it's so expensive. <laughs> like, if something happens, they'll be like, you did it. Yeah. So anything that's sold, I just leave it there. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> okay, we're done. blames me for my own piece, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, now, I mean, I had a couple of talks about the tarot cards where people were like, I'll buy it and then you get to keep it oh. because if they buy it now and then you know i get to keep it till i finish the whole collection the prices will go up too but uh, i get like an investment yeah yeah but i'll get sense. to keep it for a show and then after the show they can have it that's nice yeah and so because you say i think do you get most of your sales through what are they called uh collectors or would you say that's how you get most of your sales yeah i mean all my I think all my collector, everybody who buys it, they're collectors. They're collectors? Well, okay. yeah. This is, I mean, this is just, we're having a business talk. That's why I'm not bragging anything because you're so scared of saying something and then some mm -hmm. Instagram person comments it. No. So, yeah. Screw that. <laughs> I mean, because uh, the prices are so high, even for the prints, mm -hmm. that like, that's why I did now like little miniature prints for everybody to be able to afford and buy it. Well, I do. Right yeah. Now, yeah, because the minis. prices for prints are so high that you mm. got to be a collector. Like mm. no regular person is going to go to the gallery and be like, oh, my God, let me just drop $10,000 on a paper. Yeah. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Are you allowed? Like, is it OK if I ask what the price range is for your prints? And I know it varies per series, but what's like a general price range? If someone were to be listening and say, oh, I want one of her pieces. What's the general what? ballpark? So it would be from. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Question. From around five to five K to 15 K. Okay. depending on you know for whatever, a print right whatever print. it is mm -hmm. and then the real originals will be like 35k and up yeah and then up goes up, up yes yeah i hope so that yeah. eden one i mean <laughs> max is like yeah <laughs> he's like i'm collecting money now <laughs> <laughs> new investment Check. yes he's been super I'm and we know the artist into it. he's like i really really like yeah the last you. artist thank we, you exactly yes of course i love your stuff and the last artist we had too we went to his show right after we interviewed him at uh gondek gondek draws on instagram he's like shouting him and we went to his show and then i'm like I want to buy like well, your original, but like they're all sold already. And then his prints were like a thousand dollars, and I'm like, ah. Or it's even still a good investment though. Oh, a thousand. Like, oh, no, I'm not saying I yeah, didn't yeah. want to spend no, it. No, they were I mean, they like, were sold out. That's the thing. Yeah. They were sold out of the print that he wanted, yeah, and it even was the funny. prints were sold out. I was like, what the hell? It was funny just going through that conversation because I got to see him before the interview, where he's like, his art's beautiful. I don't know if I'd ever buy it. To us having the I interview. Never said that. I didn't say. I don't know. Oh, I well, I mean, it, it completely changed because. After after then the we checked it out heart. <laughs> well then we checked his show out which is actually like right down the street at this big beautiful solo show avenue de arts avenue de arts yeah. yeah and um max says well i actually think i really want that one and she goes oh you, that one's sold <laughs> and he goes oh well what about prince and she goes they're all sold yeah it was like the and as feeling. we're leaving he goes i really want them and he asked and he's like well how will i know if you have new ones and he's like you That's just gotta you find on friends Instagram. with the artist exactly Always. and he's like basically yeah. just had to because his show was very beautiful how they did it people were lined up to get yeah. inside and lined up just to buy his art yeah. and i think it's because with the whole limited edition you create rarity especially Especially with oh, your no. pieces where it they is, take yeah. so long. And people buy it, it they know rare. it's an investment. Like people yeah. buy it for thousand dollars and then after two years it's like five thousand dollars. Oh, you yeah. buy something five thousand after two, three years it's ten thousand. So I mean there are people who will never sell anything they buy. Yeah. I know those people. Like they don't buy art for investment. But and then there are people who are so good at it. They're like mm -hmm. they know what they're buying, they know how much they're gonna make. So Mm. it's yeah. it's a big form of investment which is something that i've learned where's it called blue chip art i think or just other forms of art emerging artists or artists mm -hmm. that are still on the up and up where your paintings are still increasing in value uh those are a lot of people who invest in those which is really interesting i like it when people buy it just because they love Me the too. story you know? and then when like your friend buys it yeah you're just like oh, <laughs> 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 you're like 
somebody drops huge amount of money, buys it, you don't know them, you don't care. And then your friend buys it like half, half, half of a price and you're like, yeah. She really loves my art. That's what I say because I was like, oh, you keep it in the fam. Like you really yeah. love it. And that's yeah, something that's, that's so, so meaningful. Because I, I think your art is like, especially yours yeah. when you zone out, it's like a piece of your soul in a way, yeah. you know? Too much energy. Yeah. Oh, yes. Like blood, Too sweat, much of my tears. energy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's why I feel like I keep going right back to that Eden piece by like thinking of that piece. It's like a chapter of your life someone's buying. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, whoever has that in their house, my whole energy is going to be in that house. Yes. <laughs> You're like, I will come over every Christmas and Thanksgiving. I'll just <laughs> always be there. <laughs> so tell me about, we're hearing all about the fruits of your career. What have you struggled with so far? Yeah. Well, I'm a Virgo, so my whole day starts with the bad stuff and then goes to good. <laughs> it starts with negativity and then it turns to positive. It gets better. That's yeah, yeah. Though. It's like, you know, something good happens. The first thought is, oh my gosh, something's bad going to happen now. Like, I really like that too, yeah. yeah. It's it's a bad thing, but and then you can't change it. It's just the way it is. Do you think that helps drive you? Um, you know, to No, I think it's sad. harder <laughs> no. I'm trying to see if there's yeah. a positive to it. No, like, is it it's good? just like a horrible like, no, thing. Not. But I think it just doesn't go away. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, throw I do throw re- out an example. Like, I do remember. I'm not kidding. I think, oh my God, this is so sad. Like, f- first, like, I don't know. First thing I sold, I pick up the check and it was... It was, I think, $35,000. It said on the check. Oh so look at me. Look at me. This is me. What if I never sell again? <laughs> I'm the same way. <laughs> that was the I'm saddest like very... day of my life. It no. was so depressing. I was like, sad the whole time. Really? I didn't even like go to the bank to check it, you know, cash it out. I was just like, my whole career is over. Oh and God. then, my, I mean, all the bad things, somebody can, like, no one even had to like put me down. I already just destroyed myself that one day. Yeah. And I was like, what if I cannot do something good this like this again? What if, what if? And it's just like, so just like the fear. That check it. became like minus $10. That was just so sad. Hmm. What do you mean by minus $10? Like it didn't mean anything to me. Oh, Because I okay. thought that was the end yeah. of my whole career. I mean, thank Instead God it wasn't. Instead of thinking that was coming up, I, I thought that was the last day. Yeah. It's really interesting though because like I feel like I can relate to you with that. Like when something really good happens, I always find a way to look at like yeah. why it's wrong or I negative. Like, I'm going to get hit by a bus now because <laughs> that's like, there's no way it's this good. But I find it really interesting in your point though because I feel like, okay, you got that check and you're like, what if this never happens again? But then that gives you almost as a byproduct more fuel for the fire for you to like try to make that to happen it's more like being scared like you're so scared that it might not happen so yeah you kind of a drive you become better yeah Mm -hmm. it's like a weird obsession but in a good way in a good way in in a good way yeah yeah because i think it kind of helps drive i don't know i'm an optimist like i will say that out there so any bad thing i try to see like well how's that kind of good somebody told me oh my god you you went through a trauma i'm like don't be la if that's a trauma let it stay there Mm -hmm. you know if that's gonna keep me always do better because i'm scared of Mm -hmm. something i don't even know what i'm scared of but i'm scared so let it just stay there yeah or else if it's not there maybe i would lose interest yeah and not do it definitely mm. have there been any other hardships because i know and also from firsthand experience it's really hard getting started as an artist i feel like there's a lot of ups and downs oh yeah you know oh, but yeah. for you you could like knock the ups <laughs> into like uh, mid-range yeah my ups and downs <laughs> are just emotional it has it has to do with me not my work well, yeah I, I do think emotional is part of it though because i'll have yeah. some days where i just feel like i'm on top of the world it's insane and other days where i'm just like and it's just like yeah. Oh, like I, I'm so stressed. I'm so there's so many things. Like that, there's so many things to yeah. do. Yeah, there's just so it, it can be so overwhelming at times too. I think so. Do you think, especially with your mindset, how do you kind of keep yourself in a healthy mindset to be able to keep just pushing work. through? Just working. Yeah. yeah. I think mm-hmm. the second I work, mm-hmm. like that, whole, all the thoughts are gone. Like pro- progressing. Yeah. Like the yeah. second I hold the pen and then I just look down, like that whole, the reality goes away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's That's still cute. reality, but and then you just you. I mean, with my work, I can do that because I'm so concentrated on the dots. Mm-hmm. It's not like free, you know. You're not yeah. in a free space. You're like yeah. very concentrated, so all the dots just go away. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. And when you were just getting started to as an artist, when you worked with the gallery, did you just work with the gal? Oh no, you said you did some of your own stuff 
individually? Because did you just go straight from your old job to becoming an artist? Or yeah. do you think there was an in-between phase? No, it just like... It just like went... Halfway happened. And yeah. then you never went back? Mm-hmm. Did you ever have any worries or anything like that? Or were you just like, I'm good? No, you yeah, good, girl. You got I'm like good. some good energy about <laughs> you. We were like, it's gonna work out. It goes good. <laughs> well, no, no. I'll tell you this. To go very hard and raw about it... I never think there's a job that's embarrassing. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. So you don't know what you're going to do tomorrow. And like bad luck happens. And it, it it might not happen because it was a sad moment. It might happen because you need that to happen. And then so in my head, I'm okay if something doesn't happen. I'm, I'm okay to go wash dishes in a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think there's like an embarrassing job. If you're doing something and you're making money for your family, there's no embarrassing job. Mm-hmm. Make sense? Like, so what? You're wiping the floors. You're making money, mm-hmm. you know, for your house. Mm-hmm. So in my brain, like, I never regret, like, oh, I left this. What if I stayed there? Or what if, what if, what if? On that works theme, around that theme, I don't have any regrets. Because mm-hmm. even with my art, I'm like, if tomorrow something happens and I'm not doing it, it's okay. I'll just find a job. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think I'm going to get downgraded yeah it's a job there's no upgrade or downgrade in a job you're making money yeah i like that this way i'm just lucky because i'm doing what i breathe and feel what i love it's just i'm lucky Mm -hmm. but and then if tomorrow i'm gonna work in the office so what Mm -hmm. like that's how my brain kind of works on that level i love yeah i love that and we're hearing all the serious side of everything. Like <laughs> I'm so serious. Yeah. But has there been any like funny or awkward stories that you've encountered throughout oh, your yeah. adventure with oh art? Oh, God. I don't know. I think there have been a lot. <laughs> I can't think of it now because we were like so She's like, put on the live spot. talk. Like, I yeah. don't know. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm, I don't know. I'll tell you. Oh, there come was. on. Something has to pop up. Especially when you're throwing that ma- when clients are throwing that many dollars around. Like. Have you had any Next weird level. clients? Yeah. No. Oh, no. On the That's Seriously. good. I'll That's knock really on the wood good. for you. Yeah. Well, yeah no. The the for for that. all of us. No. Yeah. I. I think it's my energy. I think when somebody's like a bit, maybe disrespectful, because yeah. there's so many people like that, yeah. or somebody thinks like you know they're the shit or whatever. Yeah. I think they feel my energy, and th- those people never approach me. Mm. Good. Mm. <laughs> like no weirdos knocking on the wood ever mm. approach me. I never get weird DMs good what really never like um, i have no <laughs> pa- looks at me. honestly yeah i have no password on my phone and wow. people like you you want to check something even on my instagram i don't care because i never have weird stuff make sense that oh. good. people yeah. will get like i have so many friends even guy friends they go like this chick dm me and like they want to see my art but they're into me and i get those things happening Whoever was into me, like, at least they didn't show it. So mm-hmm. it was very professional. That's good. And whoever's into me, it has nothing to do with my art. <laughs> Makes yeah. sense? Yeah. So I never, thank God, like, no weirdos approach me. Good. <laughs> Let's just say that way. <laughs> I think they know that I'll be like, dude. I, uh, you scare them away. Yeah, let me you just tell you I'm it's blocking like you. you give yeah. or the energy you give. But I need some of that. That's good. Yeah. I'll, just, I'll just follow you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, but <laughs> I think it's the energy. They go like, okay, yeah. she's for sure not going to answer or, you know, she's for sure not mm-hmm. going to click it. So it just, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. She's got a repellent to her. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Um, yeah. So what has been one of your proudest moments so far in your adventure? All my proudest moments have to do with personal life. So we can't talk about that. Why not? Skip. <laughs> oh, <Okay. laughs> now I like really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. right. that's a coffee talk <laughs> oh, okay. oh, that's a coffee talk <laughs> all right um any or what would you tell yourself if you had to go back five years and i think that could be something huge because a lot of your successes happened within the last five yeah. years it seems like right i think that to just like not be so negative mm-hmm. not fear that like you know when it's a good moment, when it's a happy moment, Celebrate stay it. in the moment. Yeah. yeah. Just be happy. Like you earned this, be happy instead of thinking, <gasps> and then going three days, like depression mode. Yeah. That's, yes. that's stay like, for him. <laughs> yeah. like celebrate your wins. Yeah. yeah. But I know lots of people who are like that. There's no, st- I mean, I'm not going to say this. So many people are going to comment it, but if there was depression, <laughs> well, you, you can just change it. You know, you can just change it. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm sure all of us, yeah, there, there is no depression. So if you get in the bad zone, bad energy and scared and fear, just I think if we find a way to tap into something that brings you happy moment, mm-hmm. like if it's you two going to the park, I think if your brain kind of consciously goes like, just do that one thing, mm-hmm. you will very fast come to the happy stage. Mm-hmm. But we're so concentrated on it might not happen again. Yeah. That yeah, you have the yeah. creating of the art is that for you i'm very happy when i work when yeah work. i mean i'm very happy on everything i do in my personal life mm-hmm. but uh, yeah mm-hmm. but that's i think it's that one second when you just catch it you're like mm-hmm. why am i going to the to the bad, to the bad side yeah like, if you do that one thing and then you'll just zone in back to the good mm-hmm. part yeah mm-hmm. but we're humans yeah yeah you know it's, it's, it's just we like have a, our doubts i think it's a human thing yeah, yeah. That's why I never advise people. Like, you know, it's like everyone's different. Everybody's brain works in their own timing. Mm-hmm. Mm. No, I thousand percent agree with that. Look, I even know what I'm supposed to do and I don't do it. So <laughs> You can't like take yeah. your own yeah. advice. I at I time. <laughs> yeah. I just went to, Yeah. Any advice that you give other creatives or artists that are aspiring to pursue that path full yeah. time? So what would you tell someone that's like looking up to you? Maybe? Oh, this is going to be so harsh. Uh, what, 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 like someone that looks up to you, what would you tell to them or advise them? Say they want to aspire to be similar, a successful artist. Just to be straight up with my answer, I think no people have to be true to themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is a fact. Just because you know how to play piano doesn't mean you're a composer. Same thing is with art. Mm -hmm. Some people think like, oh my God, look, I know how to paint. You're not an artist. Mm -hmm. You just know how to paint. And I think the second any artist who's like, you know, that's just you. If you realize, if you come centered with your truth that this is what I am. It it has nothing to do with good art or bad art. This is what I am. Like... Mm -hmm this is how I express myself, this is what I am, then move, like, you know, go forward, go forward, even if you're going to cry and going to be doubtful and scary and all these things that's happening. But 90% of the people I meet, and it's so sad, they go like that. They go like, I know how to draw, so I want to be an artist. You're like, you're like, I don't Good know. Luck. <laughs> and I give them timing. I'm like, after six months, you no one's even going to remember this person. Be- mm-hmm. But it's not, again, uh, I'm not saying this because I'm an artist. Mm-hmm. If I was like, a, I don't know, in engineering, I would say the same thing. Mm-hmm. You don't sit and go like, I'm going to become an engineer. That never happens. So I don't know why people think that just because you know how to hold a brush, you're an artist. No. Mm-hmm. No. Just because you love houses, you don't become an architect, you know? Mm-hmm. So something- that's just you that's a lifestyle so yeah. that's who you are so how do you find out if um you know you are an artist or if you are an engineer i think it's that centered that centered that's where you feel comfortable mm. and so many talented people do so many other things and i hate when people say oh is this person an actor or he's a musician or he's well he's good at all the things he's doing so he's just a talented artist mm-hmm. so that's what that person is right mm-hmm. you know i don't know how to play a guitar i'm not gonna go and play a guitar tomorrow that's just not my thing mm-hmm. and if i learn i'm still not gonna you know that's not gonna be a career mm-hmm. so i think that's the most important thing anyone who wants to pursue art it's not you read a book you gave exam you passed the bar test and now you're in it. No, it's not. It's way. Yeah, big. it's it. It's a part of your being. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not like you pass three steps and you have a job. You're an assistant in the office. No, that's or you're that person or you're not, and it has nothing to do with style of artwork you're doing. Mm. Like some people, they some people show me like abstract stuff, and the first sentence they say, they say, "Oh well, it's nothing compared to your art," and I hate it. That's completely mm. different. You have blonde hair. I have you know dark hair yeah they're different you can't even compare it you're doing this i'm doing that it's two different worlds so what we're the same person we're an artist but so as long as it's you it doesn't matter if it took it took you 20 minutes to create art and it took me five months i chose that Mm -hmm. you didn't but it doesn't make you any less Mm-hmm. But at least your truth, right? Like yeah. when you wake up, you live like, your truth. Yeah, you're like, yeah. this is me. I'm not lying to me, and I'm not not lying to other people. Yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah. It's just I always say, I'm like, okay, you lied to the, f- you know, 
people in front of you, but when you go home, are you happy that you're lying to yourself? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, I love that. So basically just be true to yourself. Yeah, just be what standard, your truth is. be you. Yeah. Whatever that is. I hate that people downgrade and like upgrade people. And uh, screw Instagram. Even if Instagram was not around, you know, people have these standards. I'm like, who said if somebody goes to Rite Aid, Mm-hmm. is less than it works at a right it is less than you maybe that's all they want mm-hmm. maybe they have three kids their hu- her husband makes enough money and she just goes to write it to be a cashier and she's 10 times more happy than you I are say, it's about being happy yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah so the person is actually true to herself she's like this is what i love to do mm-hmm. i like that right i like that a lot because that's the goal that's the, the goal day. you just want to be happy yeah, yeah. i agree i applaud so what can we look forward to for the future of Yelena New York do you have any shows uh, I, I want to do just uh, I've never done a public show mm-hmm. like now that you said for the show people were lined up and stuff and I've never done a public show and I feel guilty for it but I think I would just do just the open public show mm-hmm. maybe this year mm-hmm. just a public show not care about sales or anything for everyone to come and see. I think it would be sweet. And then I'm talking about a private show. I think that's going to be in London. Mm -hmm. And well, and I think in 2023, I'll finish my tarot cards. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. She got it mapped out. That was like like a due date. I like that you know. I started last year. And you've been doing like the (laughs) research and things. Yeah. A good thing. I I finished three pieces. I started on the fourth one. Nice. Wow. I like that. All right, that. 2023. Mark your calendar, guys. <laughs> and then Those follow guys. Yelena York at Thank Yelena you. York. Thank you. To stay up to date with her shows and everything. Yeah. It was a pleasure to have you in and yeah. hear your yeah. story. You guys were so sweet. You were so great. <laughs> I like, wasn't expecting it. Thank I really like, thoroughly Thank enjoyed you. you as a person. No, because I'm, t- I don't know. You never yeah, know. I mean, yeah. she's right. <laughs> <laughs> People are different on Instagram. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, anyways, that was another episode of Chats with Max. It was a pleasure to have you in. Thank you. You guys, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that. Uh, give us a like. You know, help yes. us out here. Yes. We grow, Support baby. Support locals. All right. <laughs> Support locals. Seriously. Seriously. And check us out next week. All right. See you then. Bye. Ciao.